what it's really all about are these other things, the, the beetles and the, and the tiny little worms that aren't the big, you know, glorious worms that you go pulling out and you're so proud of them. Those are great. They do a really good job of the sort of initial stages of decomposition, but then the, all the work is done by these tiny little things that are just amazing decomposers. I mean, they make the most beautiful soil. And so Mimi Castile really believes in compost. As the viticulturist at Bethel Heights Vineyard, she has conducted many sustainability experiments in their vineyards, searching for the best way to grow grapes in the Willamette Valley of Oregon. What you want is perfectly balanced vines. And the best way to make that happen is to, to make them able to access micronutrition, because it's not about the big nitrogen, phosphorus, those, those we have plenty of and, and it's not ever in short supply. So what you want to do for your vines, especially in the critical last moments of the season, because in Oregon, the story we always tell is that it all comes down to that last two weeks where you may or may not get exactly what you want because those are the last moments of real flavor development. And that comes down to be, having adequate, ac adequate access to micronutrition. So my big thing with compost is that the microorganisms, the microflora, the microfauna that are um, in a very, very healthy compost and in a very, very healthy soil, those are the things that break down the micronutrients in the soil and make it available to the plants. And so it all, you know, it all comes down to having mycorrhizal fungi, colonizing your roots and accessing that nutrition that's in the soil already, um, as opposed to going out and, and trying to put it on. To make you know to make something happen for the plant you want them just to be able to do it themselves and when you have a good system like that what you get is a very beautifully balanced vine and that good system starts with the compost tea she learned to brew from a man who has had impressive results spraying it on crops and pasture land in southern oregon he was very kind enough to get me started with about, you know, five gallons of his compost and I brought it back and I added that to my compost pile and I got my own tank going and about two years later I felt like I really had something beautiful to start working with and it takes that long, you know, to really build a, a, a truly mature compost in this way because what you're really going for is the, the life in there and I had a, I had a tank built, um, so it's a 500 gallon tank that has two very high powered air pumps that um, you know blow air through these diffusers while you're brewing your tea. And it's just like making tea basically, except it's sort of, um, you're also fermenting it at the same time. So I take about five to 10 gallons of compost and I suspend that in a big tea bag in my big tank. And then I feed it with, um, you know, some kind of food source for the, for the worms and the mi microbiota in there. And um, some people use molasses. I use, I use malted barley, but it's just what you like to sweeten it up a little bit. And then you feed it for two days. Um, and there's various other things that I add, like kelp and a little bit of sea salt. And I also add some soil from our, the forested parts around our vineyard to sort of stimulate the mycorrhizal growth. And after about 48 hours um, of major aeration, I pull the bags and then we spray that on the vineyard and you can either spray it on the soil or you spray it on the leaves during the growing season and it protects them against disease. I mean, it's, I mean it is, in, in scientific trials, it has been shown to be as effective as sulfur sprays against mildew. And so, I mean, I just wish people would talk about it more because it's not, it's not weird. It's, it's so normal. It's such a natural and normal thing to do to protect a plant against all the things that it's up against. And, and really at the end of the day, what I hope to achieve is that the next great thing is not a new chemical and it's not a new implement that goes on my tractor. It's what's already there. And that's what's going to make the best wine in the end. I really, really firmly believe that we're not going to get to the next level by putting something else from the outside in. It's going to be by making what's already there better and healthier. So that's what I'm trying to do. And when we follow that all the way through to the wine, it is better. It's, it's not just a little bit better. It's a lot better.